Good morning. Welcome to the gathering room and worship at West End Presbyterian Church. I'm Todd Davidson, as always, joined by Maggie Beamgard. Um, a note before we begin worship this morning, most of you, uh, hopefully all of you, have seen the letter uh, that went out to the congregation from me about the transition that me and uh, my family will be making to uh, end my call and to go back to Richmond. Uh, again, it's been a very difficult decision, but what we feel like God is leading us to do at this point. Um, as I said in the note, I would certainly appreciate and covet your prayers uh, as we are not entirely sure what's next. And please know very sincerely that the church will be in mind. It, there will be sadness for sure in this transition. And we wish you well, Todd. We wish Aaron well. And man, we are going to miss Isaac. Isaac can stay. Can Isaac stay? Actually, uh, we are, we are going to miss you. Um, and we will have time in the coming weeks to uh, show our appreciation for and offer our thanksgiving for you and your ministry here. Um, for some specifics for the congregation going forward, the, the session has called a congregational meeting for July 19th. Because that will likely be a virtual meeting, we are working out the details. So the details of how that will work will be announced once they are worked out. Um, but do mark your calendars for a congregational meeting on July 19th. In the meantime, there is still work to do, and we are very excited about Compassion Camp, which is a new way of doing VBS. All churches right now are finding new ways to do VBS. And so coming up very soon will be Compassion Camp, and it's going to be a mix. We will be filming some videos that will be up on the YouTube channel, Pastor Maggie and I, and also some special guests from the church. And then there will also be material emailed home for you to do with your friends and family. It's a really good curriculum and we're very excited about it. There is a link uh, on the church and in the email for you to sign up if you want to be on the list to receive the email. So please join us. It's going to be a great week and a timely theme exploring what compassion means for us, for our neighbors, and for our world. Um, this week's movie is Just Mercy. Um, there is a link in below this and in the e-news this week too. Uh, it is free throughout the month of June on pretty much every streaming platform and or cable thing that exists. You can go to the justmercy.org, I believe it is, and there are links there that you can click. Uh, if you have not seen it, it is a powerful and timely movie, which is part of the reason that we uh, decided to, to drop that in. And as far as next week, there's been a change in the movie. Surprise! Uh, so we are going to uh, invite you to watch the wonderful Pixar film Inside Out uh, and explore, I think through the Psalms, uh, the range of emotions that uh, God has given us to feel and experience. So it's a, it is just a lovely film and we invite you to check that out before next Sunday. So let us prepare our hearts and our minds to worship this day. A lot of people see justice as the most futile thing you can do with your life. Give your life completely to business and you see the money piling up. Be a health nut, eat right, go to the gym, and your muscles will grow and your body will look good and you'll see results. But when it comes to justice, it seems like you just can't get ahead. You patch up one hole and something else rips open. You bring peace to one region and war breaks out in another. You rebuild after an earthquake and a tsunami hits. And you work and you work and you work and there's never any profit. There's no bank where you can store a surplus amount of justice in. Stability is never permanent. Something always tips and people always ask, is it even worth it? And that question though understandable, it's, I mean, quite frankly, it's ridiculous. And it rarely comes from those who are actually tired from pursuing justice and not just tired of the idea. It rarely comes from people who've labored for years and have good reason to ask it. And you know why they never ask? Those type of people become friends with those who suffer. Family even. Because it's one thing to wonder if someone else's freedom is worth fighting for. But when you begin to identify with that someone else, commune with them, that's when the question is no longer worth asking. 
That's when it becomes offensive even. What do you mean is it worth my time? That doesn't even deserve an answer. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how many times you fail. I don't care how little progress is made. You never stop fighting for your own. Please turn your hearts and minds to our confession. You have given us a world of beauty. And we have spoiled it. A world to feed us. And so many go hungry. A world of riches. And we are unwilling to share. A world to care for. And we think only of ourselves. Forgive us, gracious God, every time your heart is saddened by our selfishness. Every time we have no thought for others, no cares but ours. Enable us to see this world as a gift from you that can be shared and those who live on it as our neighbors. We ask this that you would help refocus our hearts and minds toward the potential beauty of this world and the service of our lives. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. I am here with my buddy, Isaac. In a minute, we're going to share a story with everybody. And I have a question first, Isaac. I want you to listen to my question. Okay. Um, are all people the same? No. No. We're different, aren't we? We are different sizes. Yeah. We uh, have different skin colors. Yeah. Some of us talk differently. Right? We're all a little different. Yeah, yeah. and just like I have this gecko watch, and I got it for Christmas. Yeah, so you have a special watch, but I don't have a special watch, right? right. So we're different. So we're going we're gonna to read a story, Isaac, you and I, about uh, how God has made us just how we are. And yeah. even though we're different, 
God made made us and made the whole world. And, so are you ready the, to share the story? Are you ready to share the story? Yeah. yeah. different sizes we come in. Yeah. When God Made You by Matthew Paul Turner. Why is he called Turner in his name? That's his name. Look at that pretty color. right you you when God made you God made you all shiny and new an incredible you a you all your own a you unlike anyone else ever known an exclusive design one God refined you are a perfectly crafted one of a kind because when God made you, somehow God knew that the world needed someone exactly like you. You, you, God thinks about you. God was thinking of you long before your debut. From the very beginning, amid history and time, you, little one, never left God's mind. God imagined your eyes your head's shape and size, and knew what you'd look like when you felt surprised. God pictured your nose and all 10 of your toes. The sound of your voice, God had it composed. The lines on your hands, your hair, every strand, God knew every detail like it was all planned. Out of billions of faces from cultures, all races, people God made from all different places. God knew your name, your picture is framed. God's family without you would not be the same. Because when God made you, this much is true. The world got to meet who God already knew. You, you, when God sees you, God delights in what is and sees only what's true. That you, yes, you, in all your glory, bring color and rhythm and rhyme to God's story. So be you, fully you, a show-stopping review. Live your life in full color, every tint, every hue. Discover, explore, have faith, but love more, and learn and relearn all that God made for you. Use your talents and passions, those gifts that God fashioned. Think up ideas and then put them to action. Because God loves you creating, your true self displaying, when light on the inside through art is portraying, when you make believe the stories conceived, the heroics, the magic, those tricks up your sleeve. When you dance alone, spinning like a cyclone, being whoever, whatever, in a world all your own. Look at her making art. God smiles and here's why. In the spark of your eyes, a familiar reflection shines bright from inside. Because when God made you, and the world oohed and awed, in heaven they called you an image of God. Look, she decorated them. Yeah, look at that bunny. <laughs> you, you, when God dreams about you, God dreams about all that in you will be true. <laughs> Yeah. That you, God's you, will be hopeful and kind, a giver who lives with all heart, soul, and mind. A dreamer who dreams in big and small themes, one who keeps dreaming and journeys upstream. <laughs> a mover, a shaker, a lover of nature. A builder of bridges, you, the peacemaker. A you who views others as sisters and brothers and lives by three words, love one another. 
a confident you, strong and brave too. You being you is God's dream coming true. Because when God made you, all of heaven was beaming. Over you, God was smiling and already dreaming. <laughs> so Isaac, in our story, this talked about how God made us, made each of us. And God made us to love each other, right? If God made everybody, we're all special and we all are loved and we're brothers and sisters and we're supposed to love each other. Isn't that right? Right. Will you have a prayer with me? Let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for making us. Thank you for making us. Thank you for making us. Thank you for making our brothers and sisters. Thank you for making our brothers and sisters. And help us to love one another. And help us to love one another. Amen. Amen. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Micah 6, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Isaiah chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead. For the widow. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, in these next moments, it is my prayer that more and more be seen of you and less and less of me. Amen. We are talking about justice today. Uh, the movie was Just Mercy. And when we talk about anything in a sermon or a church context, we are rooted in scripture. And so uh, we look at what the biblical ideas or models are for things. And as far as justice, uh, there are several things that are foundation for God's idea of justice. And this starts right in the beginning where we are told that we are created in God's image. This means a lot of things for us as Christians. It means that we have to think about how we treat ourselves, our bodies, our self-image should come from that. It's also uh, a factor or should be in how we treat others around us. And uh, the other thing is that we are all created in God's image. It is very specific about that. And so all means equal because no one person is more valuable to God than another if we look at that particular kind of theology. So that's one quality, that, that, that base is that we are created in God's image. Now, God's justice tends to be restorative. It tends to go a little bit above and beyond. And I'll give you some examples. If you're not familiar with the term the year of Jubilee, I invite you to look at Leviticus 25, that chapter, which isn't that long, lays out every seventh year part of what God's idea for justice is. Uh, people are released from their debts. Slaves are freed from their commitments. Uh, property is returned to people who previously owned it. And the seventh year is also, with the creation story, dedicated to rest. Rest is always important to God. So there is an idea there of God wanting equality. This continues in the New Testament. From Jesus' first sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, we are told that the way we look at the world is not the way that God does. Blessed are those who, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who long for righteousness. All of those ideas where Jesus is very clear in saying, God has different ideas and we think this, but God thinks this. Uh, this restorative or going beyond, above and beyond is also certainly displayed in Jesus's kind of famous passage where he talks about, you have heard it said, here's what the law is, but I tell you this in the idea of fulfilling the law. Uh, you've heard it said, um, 
uh, an eye for an eye, but I tell you not to do that. Uh, when you're struck on the right cheek, offer the left, walk an extra mile. Um, those things are all examples of how God has a different ideal in mind for us as Christians. And of course, there is no better summary of this than when Jesus is asked, what is the most important commandment? And he says very simply, love God and love your neighbor. Jesus is very clear on our commitment and God's call to us to love our neighbor. Our movie today is Just Mercy. And there, it highlights so many issues that are currently going on in our country, which again was part of the reason we put it in there. So often, I have come to understand there is more than one America, depending on who you are and where you are in this country. If you're not familiar with the movie, if you haven't watched it, it centers around Brian Stevenson, who is a young uh, black lawyer who goes to Harvard. And rather than taking, uh, Harvard obviously would open many doors for him, rather than pursuing something at a big firm, he moves down to Alabama. He ends up establishing uh, what he is, still has is the Equal Justice Initiative, and the website is included in the link. I uh, invite you to check that out and see what he's doing. And a lot of that centers, that work centers around equal representation. As he says in his TED Talk, which is also linked, there are different standards for justice in this country depending on how much money you have. And certainly the color of your skin factors into that at times. And uh, so there are many cases that he takes on, but kind of the most famous is um, the one for Walter McMillan, who is accused of killing an 18-year-old girl in that community. And it's a bit of a sham conviction. There is no obvious evidence. He has alibis um, from many people for the time of the, of the crime. And also the only testimony against him is a prison um, witness who has a lot to gain from changing his story. As a matter of fact, he gets a different sentence. And it is this whole saga of how it is not that simple. Even though those are the factors that exist when Brian Stevenson starts to investigate this, it is not that simple, and it is a whole process to get where the movie ends. Uh, certainly, please uh, take, a, take a chance to, to view that. Again, as I mentioned, there are many things that I take out of this movie in relation to my faith and what I have learned about our world. I was struck uh, as a sports fan when a lot of the protests started. There was an interview with a college coach, a college basketball coach, like a Division three. And he explained that every year he takes his team into the gym, he sets out four chairs like they were in a car automobile, and he walks the entire team through. If you get pulled over by a police officer, here's what you do and here's what you do not do. So that his team um, could be safe. That was partly born out of his own experiences of being pulled over or driving while black, but also making sure that his players are cared for. I was struck by this for so many reasons. I've heard about driving while black from uh, black friends of mine. It's certainly not something I've ever had to worry about or experience. And I have a 20 year old son who's driving. The most I ever said from, to him was don't speed and uh, you know, follow the traffic rules or whatever. I've never had to have a conversation with him or been nervous about like, if you get pulled over by the police, then you have to do this, this and this, so you get home safely. It is a different America, a different reality for me than for others. Uh, not too long ago, I mentioned this in a Facebook post, I, was, I came across and listened to an, an excellent podcast. Uh, it's called 1619, it's a New York Times uh, writer and author, and I highly recommend it to you if you have not heard of it or listened to it. I'm a history person. My mom, uh, I grew up with my mom being a history person, visiting Revolutionary War, Confederate, all, you know, if there's history to find when we traveled someplace, mom took us to see it, museums, those kind of things. I'm grateful for that, and I've always been passionate about history. And what these podcasts really revealed to me is there is a whole lot of history that I have not learned, both from public school and from being in society. There is an entire other history for our um, black family members and it stretches into music and medicine and farming even. There's a story about uh, farming in that. And my eyes were open to a whole new reality. And uh, I think part of what we're talking about in justice 
and being followers of God is we have a responsibility to pay attention, to go beyond, and to, to learn, to have our eyes open so that we can work for justice. In the movie, Brian Stevenson, uh, Walter McMillan asks him, why are you doing this? Why do you care? And Brian Stevenson says, you know, he went, I went and visited your house, and I grew up in a house just like it, uh, a house at the end of the road, family members all around or whatever. I have an idea of where you come from, that, that's me. He's motivated by similarity, but also by righteous anger that somebody like him has been treated in this way and wrongfully imprisoned. And I think part of justice for God is righteous anger, and that should transfer to us. So my question to you this morning is, what makes you angry? What injustices in the world strike you as unfair? And what can you do? What can you do to help restore them, be that working, volunteering, donating, um, reading, listening to podcasts, being more aware? Um, I've mentioned before uh, Brene Brown's podcast, uh, Becoming Us, and I know that she's had several guests on recently. There are so many resources out there now, Google, books, and all kinds of articles to learn and to be more self-aware about where we are. That is the work that we are to be doing. That is what God calls us to do when we look at justice in our world. The Good Samaritan is another well-known story about justice, and by the way, it also demonstrates that idea of going beyond, because the Samaritan didn't just stop and help. The Samaritan picked the man up, took him to a place, gave money, take care of him, I'll be back. It is, again, that above and beyond that God expects and wants from us in justice and taking care of others. We know that story, and I recently saw a friend of my pastor friend of mine shared a tweet that really kind of reframed that a little bit for me, and I wanted to share it because it speaks to what I'm talking about. The Good Samaritan story is not just an example of compassionate spirituality. It's a critique against religious passivity. If church people won't work for justice and mercy, God will find other people who will. We are called as the church to not sit on the sidelines so that others would do the work of justice that God expects from us. At our last session meeting, um, Jerry, for a devotional, shared a wonderful poem that I admittedly had never heard by Langston Hughes, and it really hit me, and it works perfectly, and it's the way I'd like to end um, this message today, and as I mentioned, it's Langston Hughes, and the poem is called Let America Be America Again. I invite you to listen with open hearts and minds. Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain seeking a home where he himself is free. America never was America to me. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great strong land of love where never kings connive nor tyrants scheme that any man be crushed by one above. It never was America to me. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath, but opportunity is real and life is free. Equality is in the air we breathe. There's never been equality for me, nor freedom in this homeland of the free. Say, who are you that mumbles in the dark? And who are you that draws your veil across the stars? I am the poor white, fooled and pushed apart. I am the Negro bearing slavery's scars. I am the red man driven from the land. I am the immigrant clutching the hope I seek and finding only the same old stupid plan of dog eat dog, of mighty crush the weak. I'm the young man full of strength and hope, tangled in that ancient endless chain of profit, power, gain, of grab the land, of grab the gold, of grab the ways of satisfying need, of work the men, of take the pay, of owning everything for one's own greed. I am the farmer, bondsman to the soil. I am the worker sold to the machine. I am the Negro servant to you all. I am the people, humble, hungry, mean, hungry yet, to stay, yet today, despite the dream, 
beaten yet today, O oh, pioneers, I am the man who never got ahead, the poorest worker bartered through the years. Yet I'm the one who dreamt our basic dream in the old world while still a serf of kings who dreamt a dream so strong, so brave, so true that even yet its mighty daring sings in every brick and stone, in every furrow turned that's made America the land it has become. Oh, I'm the man who sailed those early seas in search of what I meant to be my home. For I'm the one who left dark Ireland's shore and Poland's plain and England's grassy lay and torn from black Africa's strand I came to build a homeland of the free. The free? Who said the free? Not me. Surely not me. The millions on relief today? The millions who have nothing for our pay? For all the dreams we've dreamed and all the songs we've sung and all the hopes we've held, all the flags we've hung, the millions who have nothing for our pay, except the dream that's almost dead today. Oh, let America be America again, the land that never has been yet and yet must be, the land where every man or person is free. The land that's mine, the poor man's, Indians, Negroes, me, who's made America, whose bleat, sweat and blood, whose faith and pain, whose hand at the foundry, whose plow in the rain, must bring back our mighty dream again. Sure, call me any ugly name you choose. The steel of freedom does not stain. From those who live like leeches on the people's lives, we must take back our land again, America. Oh, yes, I say it plain. America never was America to me. And yet I swear this oath, America will be. Out of the rack and ruin of our gangster's death, the rape, of, the rape and rot of graft and stealth and lies, we the people must redeem. The land, the mines, the plants, the rivers, the mountains and the endless plain and all the stretch of these great green states and make America, America again. God calls us to hard work. God calls us to justice. May we respond to that call. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we come to you now more afraid than we would like to admit. The fear of contagion surrounds us. The fear of economic hardship abounds. The fear that justice and reconciliation are impossible creeps into our consciousness even when we want to be a people of hope. As we continue to navigate the unfamiliar waters of a pandemic, and the all too familiar storms of long entrenched inequality, we admit we are afraid. We name our deepest anxieties before you, knowing that you know them before we speak them. You tell us that even the hairs on our heads are counted and therefore we pour out our hearts before you, trusting not only that you will hear our cries, but that you will answer them. Hear our cries on behalf of the oppressed and the exploited. Let justice roll down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Hear our cries of lament on behalf of those whose losses are too many to name and too heavy to continue to carry. Give to them your easy yoke and your light burden. Hear our cries of grief as we join with our siblings who mourn Comfort them until they see you face to face, and crying and death are no more. Hear our cries for the sick and the suffering, the lonely and the shunned. Heal them. Restore them. Help us to seek them out and bring them home in your name. Hear our cries for those we love, those we are called to love, those we find it difficult to love, Grant us your spirit of strength and wisdom so that we can live the commandment we know, the greatest commandment to love you with all that we have and love our neighbor as ourselves. 
Gracious God, you come to us now, assuring us of your presence and your power working through us. In confidence that perfect love casts out fear, we commit to seeking to live with unafraid faith, proclaiming boldly the good news of Jesus Christ that will set us all free. We make our prayer in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The prophet tells us that we are to love justice and kindness and to walk humbly with our God. Uh, I invite you this week to offer those things to the world, justice, mercy, and kindness in your day-to-day -day lives and through the offerings to the church. These are things that the church stands for, and in our various ministries, we reach out to the world sharing these three, three things, justice, mercy, and kindness. Let us make our offering. This kind of conversation and this kind of work is often difficult and it is often uncomfortable. Sometimes faith is difficult and uncomfortable. Uh, heard not too long ago, if we always create God in our own image, whatever that image might be, then that's probably a problem for our faith and not who God really is. So I invite you to go out into the world seeking justice, but doing so with the love of God and the love of neighbor. Amen.